And that's the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, especially when they're making content, is they make the assumption that people know who they are. So it's like, well, who am I to be giving, shelling out business advice when I really had never actually at the time built a real, like legitimate big business? The most helpful verses to people in the Bible is, is 1 Peter, I think it's 5.16, where he talks about cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. However, it's, what's important about that is, is the verse that comes before it, where it talks about you have to let your pride out of the way before you can come in and ask God to take your anxiety and you can cast your worries on him. The way that you get massive success at a young age is understanding that you know nothing that nobody cares about you you're not entitled and you probably have no qualifications to make the money you want to make to know the people you want to make and that's exactly the starting point of success but more than that what do you think was the role of god in this like everything that you have right now the followers the people coming up to you asking for pictures the relationships that you have the money that you're making like like when you really step back what was god's role in it it was everything bro Bro, so I, I watch a lot of your interviews. Obviously, I watch, you know, the hard knocks, but I've watched a lot of interviews that have you've been on. And like I said, you've had a massive amount of success at a very early age. And I think a lot of people see the fruits of your labor now. They see, well, you know, James and the, the crew at Hard Knocks, now they're killing it. They have over six million followers across all platforms. They're killing it, man. They probably would have had a, a blow up moment. Somebody gave it to them. They had a, a moment that they went viral and then that's it. They blew up. It's kind of the opposite for you guys. The way that I see it is that you guys had a very slow compounding success. Like it was very like slow, it was very pivotal. It was, you know what? I'm gonna do this small win, this small win, this small win, learn from this one. What did this do that this did better? And just stacking up like that. That's what I see outside looking in. As for you, like how do you see it? Do you think there was like an I made a moment where you had a video that just blew up and put you on the map or it was like that slow success? Man, um, that's a great way to start talking, bro, because you know, one of the biggest realizations that we had to come to is that, you know, I'll never forget the, the probably the most pivotal moment in my uh, business career was when I went to a, a mastermind out in Denver. And it was my first time really ever getting in the room with like eight and nine figure entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing this quote from people at the mastermind. And mm -hmm. They said that great businessmen are terrible content creators and great content creators are terrible businessmen. And that stuck with me for a really long time because one thing about me and my two partners, what we always did is we were never afraid to book that flight. You know, you learn early on, especially the beautiful thing about being a sponge to, you know, over the last three years interviewing over a thousand millionaires, 12 billionaires, is that we've been able to now not just take in the knowledge, but actually implement it, right? Because information can change situations, but only through implementation. And I'm a firm believer in that. And right. ultimately that that quote stuck with me because when we were starting out to build the business, we were just relying on ad revenue. And what you realize is that you can't build a business just off of ad revenue. So to answer your question, I mean, I, I, I love talking about all this stuff, but it was just, it was compounding over time. We were relentless, like we were talking about before we started, yeah. is that, you know, I was going to school at the University of Texas. If I wasn't in class, man, I was out on Second Street, just going to approach people, very intentional about going to get every single interview that I could, poss that I could possibly get, right? A closed mouth does not get fed. So, um, you know, it, it was over time, over time, over time. And then it was just fine tuning, obsessing over it. Right. And that's ultimately kind of what led to that success over time. I feel like, yeah, I, I want to dive deeper into the exponential thing, because I think there's a, I forgot who said it. There's so many things that you see online that you forget who the originator of the quote is, but there was a quote that said uh, that success is exponential. And that's exactly the way that I see what happened with you guys, because I think, bro, I swear I looked like two months ago and you guys had like 2 million followers and now you're like at almost closing in on three or four, closing in on four. So it's like outside in, it's easy to say exactly what I said, man, they probably had a viral moment, a viral yeah. video. And then yeah, that's how right. they were put in the back. Guess you know? what? A poor gas down their throats. And I say that in the sense of like, I'm a very loving and supportive person to people, mm -hmm. even in business, but a big problem what happens with people is they get very comfortable and just spending time around so many nine figure entrepreneurs billion dollar company founders and entrepreneurs you learn that these people never get comfortable they don't believe in a glass ceiling right so like even though yes we hit uh this year one million followers in january we hit uh three million followers or two million followers in may and then we just hit three million followers uh back in august and we're at 3.5 now and it's going to four very soon, but it's because like, I'm, I'm so serious when I say that it's just like, I, I, I'm not satisfied with it in the sense of like, I'm very happy with what we've built and how big it's gotten. We now have 7.8 million followers across all platforms, 
but like to me, I still feel that that's very small. There's people that have hundreds of millions of organic followers. And even though I've never ran a paid ad, I've never bought a follower in my, in my entire life, I still, it's just one of those things. It's like, I got to the chance to interview Gary V yeah. out in uh, New York City this year. Guys like Pace Morby, dude, they have armies in there, bro. And their operations are just different. They're huge. So like, you know, when I see my team of like 10 or 15 people, and then I go out there and see, man, they've got an army working on brands and partnerships and paid ads and organic and, and VCon and all these different things. It's like, man, you gotta get bigger. You gotta attach yourselves to people. Another person I interviewed was last July, Grant Cardone. I interviewed him in Aventura at his headquarters. And I'll never forget this stuck with me forever. I went in there with me, it was my two co-founders yeah. and I, and Grant said, how many of you guys are there? And we are just like, it's just us three. He goes, yeah, you guys are way too small. He goes, if you have three employees, you got problems. You got 30 employees, you got problems. Think about Walmart, 3,000 employees, 30,000 employees. Walmart doesn't have a problem. And that's why, you know, the Waltons uh, family, they're, they're seven still generations the of billionaires, yeah, yeah. bro, which is crazy, you know? Don't you think that's what has gotten you here? Because it's very easy I, I don't think I want to get into it a little bit later, but I don't think God makes any mistakes with the hands that people are dealt. Meaning, I think you have what you have for an exact reason because He knew that you'll be faithful with what you have. Do you think that that is the reason why you're here? Because you never got comfortable? Because you never said, you know, we got one million followers that just slow down. You know, we can get those people that we know we can get the podcast on. We know we can get to Gary Vee. Let's just get the bigger people. Stop doing street interviews. Just do this. Like, do you think that's the reason why you're here? Because you never got comfortable? Absolutely. And it just comes down with blocking out the noise in general. The number one reason why people fail at content creation or building an online brand or business, anything in regards to content, is because they get discouraged about what other people think. They get discouraged that, oh, this is going to get sent in a group chat. I can tell you, while we were building this channel, probably still to this day, there's probably tons of people from back home that are still sending our stuff in group chats clowning me. But it doesn't matter because I've always thought about the bigger picture my entire life. I lived in South Korea for four years. My dad ran the largest overseas military base in the entire world in Camp Humphrey, South Korea. So from an early age, I went to like 18 countries. I love looking at things from a global lens, a big perspective. A lot of people, they never leave their hometown, so they have a very narrow lens on how they view everything. Whereas I thought, it's like, hey, if we could go all over, we'll, we'll, we'll start in Austin, we'll, as soon as we get the means, we'll start booking those flights. Even though a lot of the money was going back into the business, we're like, man, if we could just go out there and lock in this interview, and then that one, and then start to get really savvy about vertically integrating the business, because I'll never forget it, I interviewed a guy, Cody Sperber, phenomenal entrepreneur, just sold a business for $25 million, he sold hundreds of millions of dollars online. He said a savvy entrepreneur looks at his business and looks at all the people, A, that are making money off of his efforts, but B, the different verticals in which he could be monetizing. So as we were talking about earlier, because I think this is very important to talk about, is that if you start a media channel, you need to look at that as a media company. Look at Barstool Sports. They sold for, what, $750 million? Like, that's what people don't realize. And that's why, you know, your favorite influencers broke, not you, but yeah. most people's favorite influencers actually broke because they don't realize like the different verticals that you can monetize in media. Media is a beautiful industry. The revenue multiples of media companies are 10 times yeah. uh, like what they actually do. The only other business that's like that is like a software company. So I know like, again, I'm pa super passionate about this stuff. No, 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 please be as this. passionate as yeah. you want. Keep going but, on with no, it. I mean. but, but seriously though, um, I know that that's like kind of going from one thing to another. Um, I'm on two hours of sleep right now, but we're gonna, we're, we keep rolling, but that's what it's all about. Seriously, 100%, genuinely, 100%. man. And it's just because like, it's relentless, we don't stop. And to, I wanna touch on something that we talked about earlier is that we never got comfortable. I still stay up till 5 a.m. packaging our YouTube videos. Cause it's like, man, if I got it, if I said I'm gonna get a video out by Wednesday and I told my founders I'm gonna get that video out Wednesday, if it's Monday or Tuesday and I don't have the video packaged, I'm up till 4.30 a.m. making sure that that video gets packaged and it's getting sent to my editor in Australia and we're getting that video out. And so I think that's kind of what's always separated us is like, seriously, comfort is a drug. Seriously, they talk about give a man cheap food, entertainment, consistent sex, and look at what happens to that person. It's the downfall, seriously, I mean that. And I also think you know who a man is by his options, meaning now you have more options, yet you still choose the latter. You still choose, hey, you know what? I have the option to go hang out. I have the go option to go enjoy my fruit. I have the option to do all these different things, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay grinding. I'm going to stay doing the same thing that got us here. Double down on that. Yeah. Do this. Do and I, it, like I said, back to that, that comfort. I think that's exactly why you're where you're at today, because you didn't get comfortable and you didn't get complacent. 
Now, I want to pin a thought that you said that you moved from your hometown, which was you were in Virginia and D.C. Mm, area. Yeah. You were born in Virginia, went to the D.C. area, yeah, right? Yeah, so just to give you kind of a background on that, I was born in uh, Virginia. I lived in South Korea from 6 to 10. I lived in three different cities there. My dad, like I said, he was the garrison commander yep. at Camp Humphreys in, in South Korea and Piontech. So, you know, got that experience. Like, I, you know, a, a big thing too is like, I think it's important to note because a big reason why, like I've always been a big people person is I grew up watching my dad speak in front of tens of thousands of troops, meeting big heads of states of foreign countries and being the exo to General Sharp and, you know, being, you know, close with like the Secretary of Defense overseas. And so I think that had a big impact on me. But so 10 years old, moved back to the DC area and was in Northern Virginia. My dad was at the Pentagon towards the end of his career, got out, kind of did the contracting thing. Another thing important to note there as well is because I did not come from a family of entrepreneurs. I came from, again, more traditional, but very supportive parents, yeah. which I'm incredibly blessed with the parents that I have, but they definitely were very reluctant and hesitant to the idea of doing this, especially with the background of my brother and then just myself. So had it not been for my brother, I would have ended up going to West Point like my dad, the military academy, and I'd probably be doing something special ops right now. My brother had a huge impact on me. Decided to go to the University of Texas. Getting out of the D.C. area and moving to Austin was the best decision that I ever made. Proximity is absolutely everything. Follow the money. But in regards to that, um, it changed my life completely because being in the D.C. area, it's a very structured city. It's centered around a lot of government jobs, contracting, defense, politics. If you want to be a legislative correspondent, go to a place like D.C. If you want to kind of do your own thing, it's not the place to be because yeah. it's just not a collaborative city. I always tell people, it's like if you want to start a business in D.C., your best bet at being an entrepreneur is starting like a home interior design company uh, or something like that. It's like I had no interest in that. So got out to Austin to be with my brother. Like I said, he had a huge impact on me. He was at UT, yeah. University of Texas. And so that's kind of how everything took off from there. So the reason that I bring that up is because I, I heard you mention on the podcast that you left that because all the people exactly what you're saying, all the people around you were not what you wanted to be. Like you said, there wasn't entrepreneurs there. There wasn't people that were building massive media companies and having these big entrepreneur uh, visions and dreams. They didn't have that. But when you did get out of there, was there a moment when you really started, you put yourself in the position of uh, the people that you wanted to interview, all these different type of people where you're like, damn, I'm thinking a little bit too small. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm thinking way too small. Like, I could think way bigger like this. Meaning, you got there and you're like, oh, I'm just going to interview people and that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that even in itself was too small. Like, did you have that moment? A hundred percent, bro. And just to kind of give you like the full background on how we even got into this channel and what we were doing. Mm -hmm. 2019, it's my senior year of high school. I'm still in the D.C. area. I find TikTok at the time, and when I say 2019, I think that's important to note because that was very early TikTok. Yeah. That was when it was the dancing app where it was not cool and you would be clowned or corny like if you were out posting on TikTok. Right, seems like forever ago, I'm not gonna lie. I saw it as an opportunity to where I'm seeing all these kids yeah. making tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars in a month, just posting content about stuff that they're passionate about, building businesses, building products, doing all these really cool things. And I got really savvy and invested with the algorithms, how to go viral, how to scale on social. That's all I know. If you ask me to run a paid ad, I would have no idea what I'm doing, but I can blow up any account from zero. And the last three years, we've done 3 billion views across uh, Hard Knocks and just a couple other accounts that we've ran. 3 billion in three years, that's like incredible. But I say that because I, that was my vehicle. I found content and that's what I kind of knew that was the realm that I liked doing. Grew my personal brand uh, from zero to 800K in 10 months. Around August, it's COVID, right? So yeah. it's 2020, about to move out to Austin. We see a great friend of ours, uh, Josh Smith. So it's me, my brother, and our, we see our friend Josh who we knew where we were. We were in Boy Scouts. I was a Boy Scout, I became an Eagle Scout. That's how I met our co-founder. We were in the same Boy Scouts. We became Eagle Scouts together. Obviously, my brother Jack and I yeah. grew up together. We met at a friend's kickback. I hadn't seen this kid in like two years. But after having a conversation with him, we're like, dude. And you, you, you notice that you gravitate towards really like-minded people. I mentioned how the DC area is very structured, strict. Not a lot of people aspiring to do anything other than going to get a six-figure government contracting job, right? So we're like, hey, after seeing him, we're like, we should think about doing something together. Move out to Austin. And, you know, kind of freshman year goes by and sophomore year, we finally, like I said, we would go back and forth on calls on thinking about doing something together. And we finally pinpoint, let's do something in, in content creation. And I say the content creation, not media, because initially we're just like, hey, content creation, it's at the time it was a $500 billion industry. And, you know, to be honest, it's like I said, with my knowledge of the algorithms, my 
partner Josh at the time had success on, on YouTube, and my brother Jack was just an analytics machine. He's the number one user at Microsoft Excel in the world. He beat yeah. 2.3 million people. And he, and, uh, he became a world champion. World no? champion, bro, yeah. which is crazy. So he was being mentored by a billion dollar CEO. I don't know if you've ever heard of Bucky's. I don't know if it's made its way out here, but it's the largest gas station convenience chain in the entire country. And so through that, we all had our different backgrounds and yeah. skill sets, which was very important since we you know, were able to balance one another out. But so we're like, hey, let's do something in content creation. And we all had a passion for business. So that's what we landed in. Okay. And it was just the three of us that were making content about business quickly realized that most people do not give a shit about three young 20 year old kids talking to you about business. So that's when we made the, the pivot to kind of say, hey, we had great mentors between our father and just other relatives that we had. Our, a lot of our peers didn't have that. What if we could go seek out industry experts that had 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of industry experience in things like tech, real estate, finance, you know, the trades, various other entrepreneurial you know, ventures. And so we did that and, and it just led to one interview after another, after another. The first, once we made that pivot, we went from zero to 25K with just us making the content about business, but you learn that content, a lot of it's about pivots first interview that we did did 100,000 views and then it enabled us to interview people like Mark Cuban, the president of Nike, the CEO of Frito-Lay, the CEO of 7-Eleven, Gary Vee, the owner of the Houston Texans, like some of the biggest business owners and executives in the entire world and start to really build relationships with these people. And uh, it's been incredible. But to kind of go back to the question, it's like, were we thinking small? Absolutely. Because I mentioned earlier, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. All we thought about, which is building a business off of ad revenue. And think about that, three people. Despite now, we do 90 to 150 million views every single month the last six months. We've done that organically across social media. Mm -hmm. But initially, we weren't doing that many views. We still had hundreds of thousands of followers, and we were still relying just off of ad revenue for three people. And so what you realize, though, is that if you're posting content on Facebook or TikTok, you don't own a you don't own any of that data and if you're in a monetization program they can withhold withdraw that at any point in time and that's what happened because our biggest stream of revenue for the first year year and a half was facebook we got in an invite only reels program we were making about thirty thousand dollars a month but guess what and the whole reason why facebook was paying is because for the first time in in 20 years that facebook's been uh, existed mm -hmm. They, they stopped growing. Like it was their first year ever that they were not, and this was 2021 or 2022, is the first time ever in Facebook's history where they were not growing. So how does Facebook start competing again? They gotta start paying creators and that's what other platforms are doing. So they launched Reels. People that got in early on that started to crush it and start to make some good money. But as I mentioned earlier, if you're a content creator and your business is dependent on ad revenue, you're fucked. Because at any point in time, any of these platforms can just be like, hey, you know, we, yeah. we don't want to pay you anymore. And that's what happened to us. So we were literally, we, would, we went to downtown Austin, 3rd Street, and we were at the Facebook headquarters there writing a letter saying, hey, we need this. This is a big part of our business. And, and this is what happened. So right then it started to kind of click that it's like, wait a minute, if this is what we're going to go all in on, we see the value. One of the most important skills and the hardest things that people understand how to garner and master that we did was attention. But how do we really build a business out of it? And so that when I mentioned, when you asked about how we were thinking small, it's like we 100% were. We didn't realize that just interviewing people could lead to actually, you know, like I said, vertically integrating, look at all the, the different, you know, aspects that we can kind of build out of like a media company. And um, that's ultimately like what we had to do in transition. And now it's enabled us to build like a seven figure business. There's a lot of points that I, I took away from that. Definitely, I think a lot of people that took a lot of points away from that. But one thing I want to mention is that you had that micro failure, like looking back now, or maybe in the moment it was a, a big failure when they stopped give, uh, sending ad revenue your way, Facebook, because I was $30,000 a month at, what was that, 2020 that that happened? Uh, 2021 into 2022, we, we, we were a couple months, we were, we were really doing good on there. So that happened, right? And a lot of people would say, well, man, that, this is my sign, God. Yeah, you and, know? and so like, just to give you a little bit more context, like when that did happen, that's kind of like when we made the decision to kind of like put a halt to the other things that we were doing. So my brother was, you know, consulting for a bunch of companies, doing some data analytics, building some software. Josh was running a digital marketing agency. I was doing my own content, but we all became really big believers in focus, right? Follow one course until successful. That's the acronym that I like for focus. And uh, that's why we all went all in. Um, and so that's, but with that, when that happened, it's like we, we didn't really know exactly the full extent of of what we had to do, you know? You know you know what I see from that is that a lot of people can, like I said, look at that 
And I think God will keep you at your failure until you learn the lesson. Mm. And I think a lot of people have said, man, I lost $30,000 a month in ad revenue. Nah, this is my sign. I'm going to take it off. But it was that failure that allowed you to think bigger. Like if that never happened, you want to, would have probably still kept relying on that. Never would have thought about the school of mentors. Probably would have never thought, obviously you would have got to it, but that failure forced you to think bigger. Yeah. And I think that's a lesson for the people that are watching right now that the failure that you're at right now that, you know, it seems like it's never going to end. It seems so big. It's like, there's a lesson there, like a huge lesson. And you don't really learn it until you look back. I think it was Steve Jobs that he said, you, you connect the dots to looking back, not forward. It's the same thing like with what you have, what happened with you that failure allowed you to think bigger, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly why people that are watching that are young shouldn't be scared to fail. Like genuinely as cliche as it sounds like that should be something that you're running towards because that's where you learn the most. Yeah. You know, there was another point that I, that I want to go back to that you, you, you went to UT, you went to uh, Austin area. Like you said, you, you realize you were thinking small when you started interviewing these people and when you started seeing, okay, this is how a media company is supposed to run a failure with the ad revenue. But I also want to mention that you didn't have the end vision in mind when you moved. So you didn't have the end vision in mind when you decided to take the step forward. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get your take on that because I think a lot of people be, can be looking and say, well, look, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know the steps. I don't know anything. So I'm not going to take the risk. I think you did the complete opposite. You took the rest without knowing what it would look like. Yeah. Do you think that's true? No, I mean, it's a great point. And, and the reason being is because at the end of the day, like we had to, to go through that to ultimately grow through it. And, and I would, if I knew then what I know now, there's so many different things that we would have done differently right off the bat to think more of like the business you know, perspective earlier on. And we would have had gotten to that success a lot faster, but ultimately, you have to kind of learn those lessons along the way. And I think it's a great, like that adversity is really what's going to help you grow uh, in, in, in the business. There was another point that you said, uh, the story that you shared where you realize, you know what, there's three kids that we're talking about business and how to be successful and how to make a million dollars. Who are we to start talking? Yes, you guys had a business success, but you realize people didn't really care about that. Humility. I think that's another huge factor that I've quickly come to realize that especially at a young age, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is the question that I, I wanna ask you, that the way that you get massive success at a young age is understanding that you know nothing, that nobody cares about you, you you're not entitled, yeah. and you probably have no qualifications to make the money you wanna make, to know the people you wanna make, and that's exactly the starting point of success. Understanding that you're not qualified for any of the stuff. And I think that was your starting point too, when you realize, who are we to talk about business, you know? 100%. And that's the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, especially when they're making content, is they make the assumption that people know who they are. So it's like, well, who am I to be giving, shelling out business advice when I really had never actually at the time built a real, like legitimate big business? And so it's like, hey, let's actually give people access to experts through then learn all the necessary skill sets and different things to implement to our business at the time to then grow it to a point where it's like, okay, now maybe we can start to shell off some value on the things that we've learned and been able to implement and find that success. So. I think humility is extremely important and, you know, getting your ego out of the way, right? Your ego is not your amigo. And a lot of people, you know, they you have I'm, a lot of phrases, bro. Love, You're really good at the phrases. Yeah, I'm all about the sound bites, bro. You know, that's crazy. I'm, Did I'm you get that from people that you interviewed or you just over the time you just, yeah. I, yeah and, and I think that that's just more engaging as well, man. It is. Yeah. Like, I like the analogies. I, I, I geek over it, man. Like I love it. Like whenever I'm in an interview and somebody drops a, a new sound bite for me to kind of like, you know, take into like a podcast or something you like that. It. But, but also like, again, like it, it puts it in perspective as well. You know, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, as soon as you kind of remove that out of the way and realize that, you know, most people, like you said, like they don't, they didn't care. Like, like, who am I to, to kind of be doing this? Right. You, you, you humble yourself. Right. Yeah. It's just like, again, you're, you're a faith based person. I'm a mm -hmm. Christian as well. One of my, I think the, the most helpful verses to people in the Bible is, is, is first Peter. I think it's uh, 516 where it talks about cast your anxieties on him because he cares for you. However, okay. it's, what's important about that is, is the verse that comes before it where it talks about you have to let your pride out of the way before you can come in and ask God to take your anxiety and you can cast your worries on him. You got to let your pride and your ego out of the way. And the same thing can be correlated in the business before you can kind of start calling the shots and doing these things. You need to first 
like, hey, am I really in the position where I should be doing this? And that's, I think, really important. And that helped us out a lot was having that humility, whether you're going to God, whether you're doing something in business, whether you're approaching a mentor, whatever it may be. So I think that's really important. People don't talk about that a lot, but that's something that I really did. There was a period of time where I was kind of struggling with some anxiety and like, mm -hmm. to me, why easiest or? thing that took it away. Uh, just, just everybody, I think everybody goes through seasons. You know, yeah, I, 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 we were going zero to a hundred and I'll still kind of go through them, but I think that that's just like the, the best thing to fall back on, in my opinion. Uh, and then the other thing, the two biggest things that helped me out with that, anything mentally, is uh, I think any time that I've ever felt or like struggled like mentally is like when I like slow down. Like you just gotta kind of keep going. But at the same time, I say that, you still gotta make sure that, hey, am I good? Am I doing good? Checking on yourself and then do the necessary things, you know, to make sure that like you're doing good and, and, and taking care of yourself as well. But just, you know, like I said, I, everybody, I think at one point or another goes through seasons and that's important to note. Yeah. Cause like even, you know, the most successful people that I know, man, like there are some crazy stories and they'll, they'll talk about how, man, like they may have had everything, but like they were deep down, like miserable or not feeling themselves. And so that's what I think it's important for everybody to try and avoid that. I also think there's a verse in the Bible that Jesus said that, well, good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet lose his own soul. Mm. And that's something that I always hold on to because, you know, exactly like what you said. It, you know, I, it's something that, a side note, I want to get into uh, later, but something I've realized that you start incorporating God into your content. Yeah. I like that. You know why? Because I think the devil's working overtime. Well, you know, you know why also though? Because nothing else matters, bro. The most, the, the most important thing is the vertical, the vertical line that we that we draw with God. And I actually got that out of one of the very first interviews that we did. This was back in like 2021, where I interviewed a gentleman. And I mean, I don't ask the question anymore, but I, we asked him like, "Hey, does money buy happiness?" And he owned a construction company. He was getting ready to build like a, a, a version of Yeti to kind of compete with them. And he said, and he said, "Nah, man. Like, like every everything between whether it's you know relationships or cars." sex, money, drugs, like it's all a dying dead road. Like the only thing that can really give you that long-term fulfillment, peace and happiness is like the relationship that you have with Christ. So it's all about the vertical line 100%. that we draw with God, you know? Um, so, and, yeah. and, and that again too is, I think another reason why people struggle with is like, they sort of kind of like feel like, well, what is my purpose? Maybe they're crushing it on all cylinders, but a realization that I came to was like, well, man, I'm, we're, we're crushing it right now. We're doing really good. It's the best we've ever done like does it even matter and it's like i think if you have that instilled in you where it's like it does it's for a bigger purpose and that ultimately it's like god's greatest gift to us is the gift of life and that you need to you know fulfill that and live every day you know to ensure that you're making him proud and that you're doing everything you can to, to be your best self i think that's really important 100 percent. and i'm happy that you said that because like i said I, I really truly do believe that the devil's working overtime yeah i mean you see it in like i'm not even going to get down that rabbit hole but it's true you see it in music videos you see it in movies you see it in uh, everything's becoming desensitized. Yeah, so I bro, think it's terrible. the ability to have a platform like you have and still talk about God, yeah. having a platform with 10,000 followers and still talking oh, about yeah. God, like that's the fight that really matters. Oh, bro, hey, we, we forever will too. Like, 100%. I mean, I, I will never ever shy away from that. I don't care what opportunity comes, who we can work with. That shit's way more important than anything else, you know, genuinely. So I'll never like shy away from that. Um, incorporating that into my interviews and if somebody brings it up it's like we'll, we'll dive in we'll talk about the importance of that faith because everybody i feel like kind of has a different journey or story of how they you know grew closer to christ or whatever people's religion was i'm a christian that's my lord and savior is jesus christ I love but that. everybody kind of has you know like hey i respect everybody's beliefs you know yeah. and perspectives i just got a, a thought i know that you you mentioned in another podcast uh, that you want to build like a massive media company sim similar to bar souls mm -hmm. you can incorporate like a faith division of that 100 percent be fire because i know you said you had uh, the sports was a, a division of it i don't know i, I think i literally stopped watching the interview at that because i was running over here but i just heard you talking about different divisions of the a big media conglomerate but i'm just yeah. a little a side note with the yeah. a faith that would be fire kind of like bro. turning point usa turning 100%. point has like a faith division that's yeah, very interesting but something that i also heard you talk a lot about on a podcast is obsession I think nothing ever, nothing great has ever come from like, you know, take it easy, you know, don't be, you know, this is, this is my favorite thing. I grew mm -hmm. up on this. This is my favorite one. Listen, you know, play it safe. Just be balanced. Don't go, don't go all in on one thing. That's my favorite thing because you know what I realized that that's absolute BS. Like, like anybody that's ever done anything monumental that is actually admirable yeah. that actually impacts people right. was obsessed well, well yeah let's talk about look at you know what 
Mark Zuckerberg did with Facebook. He locked himself in a room and coded for 16 hours. Look at Bill Gates with Microsoft. Look at Elon Musk. Like, dude, they lose their minds. And that's like what we did with Hard Knocks. Like, bro, I talk about this a lot. I could not go to a sub shop without seeing a dude sitting down and being like, man, I just need to interview this guy. I know that this would be a million views. I know that he's got some shit to say. And like, that's kind of like what it was. And I feel like, to, to be honest, like a question that gets brought up a lot on stuff like that is that a lot of people struggle with like, how do I know when something's like the right thing for me? And I feel like it's when you have that feeling, it's like where you can't really go anywhere without thinking about whatever your business is or whatever, you know, your baby is, like whatever that thing is that like that keeps you up at night, right? That heart's burning desire. And for us, you know, I mean, like I had that, I had the skill sets in content creation. I knew like the virality. I knew the algorithms inside and out. Um, and then it was also, again, like I said, I loved, I love people. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer. Um, people will take you places that money can't. 100%. And so I've just always, you know, attached myself to people, um, especially now learning that more so than ever and being able to kind of, you know, leverage those relationships, but also again, being a giver because life gives to givers and it takes from takers and it keeps very accurate accounting. You can't cheat it. So much who is given much is expected. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know what I realized that there's the answer to everything is in the Bible straight up. Yeah. Like there's something that I realized and I hope that some, one of you guys can take it away. Mm -hmm. Something that I want to make a side note of that as obsessive as you can be, the timing is not on your timing and you don't want it on your timing. Mm -hmm. Cause I think if you would have had the 4 million followers on IG, if you would have had the seven point, oh, was 7.8 yeah. or 7.5, 7.8, 7.8 followers cross all platforms on your timing, it wouldn't have been the same. You might've lost it all. You might've, I think everything happens in due time, but the trick with that is that as patient, as urgent as you can be with the work that you're doing today, you have to be patient in like the macro and like understanding that there's a bigger vision. Like, how do you not balance that, but how do you balance that? Like being urgent and like you said, getting two hours of sleep, doing this, going to this city, going to this city, but yet still being patient with the results. Yeah. Um, well, something that I brought up like earlier too, it's like I said, like making sure, you know, like keeping it, keeping accountability for yourself of like all the different kind of things that like you have going on. And that's why it's so important to learn how to delegate. Right. Yeah. And, and I've, I've learned um, that in business, I'd rather have a slice of the pie than 100% of a grape because yep. too many people want to be that solopreneur. And that's ultimately why businesses fail, why people don't scale. It's because they want to kind of be greedy and kind of do everything themselves. And so I feel like with me, bringing other people in, bringing the right people and putting them into positions, but also rewarding them because if you have talented people, you know, you got to compensate them. You got to make sure that, you know, you're doing the right things with them. Um, but ultimately, it's like it absolutely is important to, to balance all those things, you know, like for me, just kind of like how we were talking about, um, well, like when I was going to school, we were building this, like you have to make some serious sacrifices. What, was uh, the, what were the sacrifices for you? Well, yeah, man, I'll put it this way. So like, there's that big debate of like, and, and I'll answer this like truthfully, because I feel like I, my perspective on this is kind of like, I'm gonna say unique, but like, I'll just give you mine on it. It's like, there's that big debate. It's like, oh, should you go to college or like start your own business? I'll say like, first and foremost, I'll break it down. If you have to take out any loans to go to school, unless you're trying to go uh, for something in medicine or law, like I, in today's world, I would never do that. However, if you have the means to have college paid for, whether it's by a relative or scholarships, or it's just like really affordable, then you can absolutely do that and still go and build a business. You just have to be willing to make those sacrifices. So like for me, I look at when I was in school, I had my non-negotiables. I put fitness, that was always very important to me, physical fitness right? Always staying in the gym consistently. Cause I think that that helps with confidence. I think that helps with mental clarity. Cause if anytime my fitness was off or whatever, like you just start to, it, they're all collect, they're all connected. Your spiritual health, your uh, physical health and your mental health. When one is off, the others are, it, it, it's, it's very interesting how that kind of trifecta works. And I don't think it's talked about enough, but when I was going to school, fitness was a priority to me. I knew that I had to get certain grades to pass in school. And, you know, at least I guess I had the luxury of I studied advertising, probably one of the easier majors that you can study in college. That's a major? Advertising? Advertising, yeah. It's just like marketing, advertising. Yeah. But I say that and like I, I had to get the grades that I had to get. But um, I still, you know, way more time that I put in when I was in school was, was to this. Like I said, if I wasn't in class, we were going out to get interviews. And then by the time my senior year hit, I mean, I was flying at least once a week. And I still had classes every single week. I was still, but I was still flying at least once 
uh, once a week to a different city to film content. And by then we had started like a marketing agency. So a lot of the top entrepreneurs that we were interviewing, we had them as clients for yeah. our, our, our content agency. Yeah. And so, but again, it comes, and I had bottlenecks too. Like I had a professor, I had at the time our agency and our business, we were probably doing like 60 grand a month. And I had a, 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 one of my professors who wouldn't let me go because it was a capstone. So she said attendance was required. She said, oh, if you miss, um, you know, you may have, there's only a certain amount that you can miss. So like, that's the bullshit that you kind of have to deal with. Yeah. But you kind of just have to be able to find that balance. But like, like I said, for me, like wh where did the sacrifice come in? It was like, I still had a great time living in Austin. I had a great circle of friends. They were all really like mine. And I still would go out every now and then. And I lived a normal life. I just, like I said, people talk about- obsessive. Obsessive, bro. Like you'll find the time to make it happen. Like anybody that tells you that you can't do both, it's bullshit. You know and what I mean? It, Genuinely, it's 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 bullshit. Like if, if somebody tells you that you can't do both college and building a business, like now looking back, like is it necessary to go to school? Absolutely not. But I don't think it hurts. Here's the thing. I went to the University of Texas. That's the second highest endowment in the entire country. Number one is Harvard. The second richest school in the entire country is UT Austin. So why does that matter? Because think about the amount of old money that's out there. The, you know how the relationships is, that you make by just saying, "Hey, you know, I'm a graduate to, I from UT Austin." Austin. Yeah. You know how much, like, like uh, the owner of the Houston Texans who I interviewed, he was a Longhorn. Like, and granted, will I ever use my degree to go get a job? Ninety-nine percent chance, probably not. But it still kind of gives you that leverage. And again, when it comes to building relationships, it's find those similarities, that relatability, and that's something that I don't regret going to school and getting. Um, but was it necessary? Absolutely not. But you can absolutely do both. Yeah, I think there's two sides to that conversation that. Like you said, that what you just said is not really talked about. And it's something that I learned from my father because he he went to FIU, went to UM to get his um, master's or MBA. And he told me, he was like, bro, look, I know you're doing this thing with the podcast. I know God's timing. It's going to do its thing. But, bro, stay in school. Trust me. He's like, why do you always say that? He said, well, look, the reason why I say that is because exactly what you just said. It's not about the job that you get because realistically, you don't need a degree to get any job. It's about that one relationship that you're going to get, that one person that you're going to meet by just saying, hey, I graduated from FIU. Hey, I'm a graduate from UM. That one person that you're going to meet, mm -hmm. they say, oh, okay. They're more inclined and they're more open because I know you can definitely, we can go on hours on this subject, but having a foot in the door with a relationship, that is what creates the relationship. Like, I, I mean, you know, there's so many situations that I'm assuming of you getting to that next person that you've been dying to interview from the person that you just met that you know he knows that person. And then it was just that foot in the door, like a foot in the door just makes that relationship building so much easier. And I think having a degree does that to a certain extent. I mean, depends on what college you go to, but that's what I believe. And another thing is that I also think that if somebody watching this right now that is in college, that is young, is saying, well, you know, when I drop out, I'm going to start my business. Don't start your business. Because if you cannot start with the circumstances that you are at right now, with the time that you're given with right now, you're not going to be successful when you have more time. Exactly back to the point of the Bible that too much is given, much is test or much is expected. Mm -hmm. So to whom much is given, much yeah, I love that. Exactly. One. And yeah. then to those who do nothing with what they have, nothing more will be added. Mm. You know, so it's like with what you have right now, whatever the time, the resources, the relationships, like make the most out of that. Yeah. Then that's when everything else will come. Yeah, a hundred percent. And just to kind of add on to the end, because we were talking about like sacrifices, like yeah. I love the saying where it's like sacrifice, short term, temporary pleasure for your dreams. If you don't do that, then your dreams will become your sacrifice. So like, like if you can't sacrifice the short term pleasure and temporary pleasure, then you're for your dreams and other then you're going to sacrifice your dreams for that. And it's just yeah. not worth it. But to answer your question, it's absolutely correct. Most people don't realize like you're one degree of separation closer to just about anybody in the world. Like I look at the network that we built now, mm -hmm. the amount of Fortune 500 company CEOs that we've been able to build relationships with um, and stay connected to these people and have them on live calls to talk to our community. And you know, they've, one person gets you to connect to the next person. A lot of people ask like, hey, like how do you get connected to this person, whatever. The majority of the time, it's like from one person to another. And that's, that's way easier than just cold outreaching to a person, especially if you're somebody that, like the one thing that we have to our advantage is that we have like a really big brand. So it's like, even if we called outreach to somebody, there's a good chance of at least kind of getting a reply, coordinating something, having interest on that side. But if you don't have that, even if you just build one relationship and you can kind of develop that and curate that over time with that person and, and you know that, hey, this person is connected to this person, like as long as you have, you know, in, uh, honest intent and a meaningful way of kind of getting to that next person, it's like, I don't see why 
it's happened to us so many times. And like I said, you're one degree of separation closer to so many people that you don't even realize. That's powerful. Before we end it, guys, because, you know, I wanted to end off the strongest thing. We touched off on it, but I really want to ask you a question ending off on it. But before we end, guys, if you guys don't already know, if you already see his content, you guys see the content of the School of Hard Knocks, you guys have the opportunity not only to see it, but to learn from the people that he's interviewing. The, all these Fortune 500 people that he's talking about, all these big influencers, all these CEOs, all these billionaires, guys, you can learn directly from them. In the link in the description, I'm going to put School of Mentors. Guys, crazy platform. I myself have checked it out. Insane amount of value. You get or you get Zoom calls, live calls, Q&As, content, like yeah, I mean, everything I mean, behind I, the scenes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, like every week we host live calls with uh, eight, nine, and even 10 figure entrepreneurs, Fortune 500 CEOs, uh, tech founders who sold companies for a billion dollars, uh, people in industries like home services that have built $200 million companies, people that have built $600 million insurance agencies. So um, it gives you the ability to, we have 1,300 members in the community right now who can hop on live calls every week and talk directly to the people that we interview. Because here's the thing. Do you have real dreams? Do you have what? Do you have real dreams? Real dreams? Yeah. Do you have real dreams? I would hope so. Is there a shortcut to them? I heard you say this. Yes. <laughs> no, there's not. Or, or, wait, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I flipped it on yeah. you because you the last time off. somebody somebody me. asked somebody that to you and you said me. no. Yeah, you did. Somebody you said me. no. But yes, I'm going to say yes. You know what the shortcut is? You know what the shortcut is to success? What's the shortcut? It's mentorship. 100%. That's what it is. 100%. And, and, and 100%. Um, like I said, it, it gives you... Uh, the access we've got tons of exclusive content in there uh, i've been filming master class with some of the top uh world entrepreneurs and on and marketing how to sell how to create wealth in real estate we've got fortune 500 ceos teaching uh master classes on becoming a ceo so like yeah. this is not like i i'm i'm the biggest proponent person against like the whole new guru thing and like that's see that's that's another important thing too real quick is that the biggest problem that i see a lot of people in media and content creation make is mm. because they're so desperate for bread they end up selling out and our number one priority with every decision that we make is that it doesn't dilute our brand equity. That's why we waited until we had six or seven million followers to actually build a great product that could really help people and it gives them direct access, right? Because we're in the bridging business. We are bridging people, average consumers that do not have access to uh, even let alone one millionaire. But, but I mean, I look at like the people that we have lined mm -hmm. up, private equity billionaires, like just crazy people that people can talk directly to. And again, that's why it comes down to the, you know, how maybe they'll even get these people on there. Mm -hmm. It's building relationships, love providing it. value for one another. So, um, yeah, I, I love it, man. It's been really exciting. The feedback's been amazing. We've got plans to just continue to scale, partner up with some great people. And, and uh, yeah, the School of Mentors. And I'm not going to say anything. I don't know. But I have a feeling that this is going to be one of the largest and most this is going to be one of the school communities that has longevity because mm -hmm. there's nothing like it. Like you're literally one yeah. of one on that platform. And guys, I would say get in before it goes up. He hasn't told me if it's going up. I don't oh, know if the no, price yeah, is going yeah, up. It is. It is. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So I would yeah. get in. Not, you know, yeah, I, I would we, just go and link yeah. in the description. Check it out. Yeah. Guys, just check it out. But I want to end off with something important that we already touched up on. But God, and I appreciate that, you know, you're open about it because mm -hmm. a lot of people won't be open about it. We'll yeah. say, you know what? Yeah, I, I, the two things I don't talk about are politics and religion. Well, good for them. I don't believe in religion. I believe in faith. And I have my faith mm -hmm. in Jesus. So Relationship I over religion. 100%. Yeah. So, like I said, I have a relationship with Jesus. So I have to talk and be open about it. Mm -hmm. As for you, I know you just talked about, you know, Christ, you coming to Christ, you casting your anxieties onto him. But more than that, what do you think, like, was the role of God in this? Like everything that you have right now, the the followers, the the people coming up to you asking for pictures, the relationships that you have, the money that you're making, like like when you really step back, what was God's role in it? It was everything, bro. You know, I mean, even if I didn't realize it at the time or when I was building, like at any time I've actually stepped back to do a reflection, you just realize like how truly like blessed that we are. Even people that may not even like just to be breathing right now. That's like whenever I pray, man, I I, I pray for the little things, man, the ability to see to touch, to feel, to smell. Like some people don't even have that ability. So it's like, it's like the more that we can kind of take time to be thankful and grateful for like little things that God enables us to do. Um, I think the better off everybody will be, right? Having that kind of gratitude, something I don't even do enough. And I, I, I just can only, I only need to grow more in my faith and, and that relationship with God. I think you touched on that. It's like, it's, it's like a relationship over religion. I think that's extremely important. I think there's too much of an emphasis put on the, the you know, yeah. the state of this church and all yeah. that and and 
And like, while I respect anybody kind of in that, um, you know, position, I'm, I'm, I was born and raised Catholic. Um, but like I said, like I am open-minded in the sense of like, I, like I said, I value my relationship that I have with God as opposed to like what anybody can kind of tell me about that. And it's just something that uh, we can all just get better at doing. And there's stuff that we can be doing better every day in, in that aspect of our lives. 100%. So seriously. Hey, bro. one more. We, we got to give uh, one more sound bite. What's one, one more sound bite? What's the a, what's a last sound bite? Work like it's up to you and, and pray, pray like it's it. up to God. Hey. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> bro, that's it. You know, I had a, is, did he, you didn't get that from my video, right? Mm -mm. Okay. Because no. I had a video that just went viral. Funny enough, saying that. I got that from Kahinde, the gentleman who was in here doing a podcast before. Bro, it's crazy how you don't know the or originator of a quote. Yeah. I think I heard it from PBD and then he mm. heard it from somebody else. Yeah. But it's a great quote and I'm, I'm happy that you brought it up. Guys, there's yeah. a bunch of sound bits. You know what we should do? You should make a module on school for just sound bits. Mm -hmm. 13 yeah. seconds each module. Just yeah. a sound bit, sound bit, sound, sound bit, bite. sound bit. Yeah. Fire. But guys, if you guys did enjoy, please check out everything in the description. The School of Mentors, if you guys don't already follow him, follow him. Follow the channel. Do all that good stuff. And also, you know, on this topic, I invite you to get open about Jesus. You know, as we're ending off, we might as well end off on this. But seriously, guys, thank you guys so much for making it to the end. Like I said, check out everything in the description. Anything else you want to leave off on? Nah, just tap into the School of Hard Knocks, the School of Mentors going to be like one of the biggest entrepreneur communities in the 100%. entire world but i really enjoyed our conversation today and i appreciate you having me on bro it means a lot appreciate thank you, you my friend. i appreciate you guys thank you so much and i'll see you guys on the next one